So I was supposed to make this video on June 25th because on June 25th, the ice road came out. And in that, this happened. So yeah, let's talk about that. Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Aryan and today we're talking about how I got to work on a movie without going to film school and how you can do the same. So this video is mainly going to be like a little bit of story time and then my advice to you if you're trying to crack the industry. So first things first, how did I get to work on the ice road? So as soon as I graduated, I was already enrolled in the film production program at Vancouver Film School. It was a year long course and it was going to cost me around $45,000, dollars which was a lot of money. So basically what I did was I took a year long break between my graduation and my start date at Vancouver Film School. So in that year long break, I basically dedicated all of my time to just two simple things, saving as much money as possible and learning as much about film as possible. So to save money, I immediately got a full time job and I would do some part time work over the weekends as well. Something like weddings or commercials, any kind of gigs I could get, I would work on those. That's what I did to save money mainly. And to learn about film, I watched a lot of YouTube videos. I read books, online articles. If I could find people that worked in the industry, I would just try to get as much knowledge as possible. I was just really into learning about my craft and just getting better every single day. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. A lot of you are probably just like me. So I just did that honestly every single day. I tried to get better every single day. And I did that for a full year. And just before I was about to go to film school, I canceled. And the reason I canceled was pretty simple. I talked to some of my friends who had already graduated and they said that they were getting PA jobs, like basic entry level PA jobs right out of film school. And I kind of already knew that, you know, I had set my expectations. I was okay with working my way up the ranks. But what I didn't know is that you don't need a film education to get that exact same job. I would say at least half or maybe more than half the PAs working right now don't have a film education. That's just a normal entry level job. As long as you're part of a union, you can literally just go and apply for it. So I really didn't understand the point. If I can just work my way up the ranks exactly the same way, why would I need a film education? I mean, I'm not trying to bash film school here. I mean, there's so many different uses for it. If you're actually trying to get an understanding of movies and how all of that stuff works, I totally understand. You want to go to film school, go for it. But I felt like I'd already gotten a lot of that knowledge from high school and just studying on my own time, finding as many resources as possible. So I felt like I had a basic knowledge of that and, you know, getting on set, working in the industry would just, you know, add to that knowledge. I would get real world experience working on sets. That was my thinking there. So long story short, I basically canceled my application and I went back to my high school to talk to my teachers and I asked them, you know, what could they get me? If they had any connections in the industry, if they could get me any kind of job, I was happy with doing anything. And two days later, one of my teachers came back to me and he got me an internship. It was an unpaid internship at a little company as a compositor. Of course, I was over the moon excited, but there was like one small problem. I basically had no knowledge about compositing. But the catch was I had a four day window between when I knew I got the internship versus when I actually started. So those four days, I basically watched YouTube nonstop. Every single thing I could learn, I learned. Since the internship was unpaid, I mean, there's not necessarily, you know, pressure to perform, but I knew that this was my one chance at basically making the industry. You know, this was a really good chance too. So I wanted to do the best I could. So I learned as much as I could. I listened to all of my supervisors as closely as possible. And in the five weeks I was there, I guess I was able to impress them enough that they just hired me on full time. And I was able to work on the ice road and 13 other movies after that. And I'm still working there as a compositor. And you know, it's been honestly a dream come true. The ice road is special to me because it was like the first big movie I worked on and seeing my name at the end of it, it was just a huge deal. So now on to some advice for you guys. If you're trying to crack the industry, I mean, the only thing I recommend to everybody is that in my opinion, at least a really amazing portfolio beats a film education any day of the week. I've honestly never had anybody come up to me and ask me if I have a film education, not a single person. They always ask me, let me see your work. That is the first question. And that is honestly the only question that matters. So I recommend spending all of your time and energy just learning and getting amazing at what you want to do. For me, originally it was working as a video editor. I basically spent all my time learning about that. But as soon as I knew I had a chance to get a job as a compositor, 
I completely shifted my goal towards that and I learned as much After Effects as possible. And now I've been working on movies for about a year and a half now and I'm even training to be an on-set visual effects supervisor, which is amazing. I get to go on movie sets now, which is incredible. I mean, everything's opening back up, so it's really wonderful to be on set. So many new experiences. And honestly, if you're trying to crack the industry, get yourself the best possible portfolio you can. That is the one advice I can give anybody trying to do this. All right, guys, so I hope this video helped you out. I hope you learned something from my experiences. And if you did, don't forget to leave this video a like for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys next time.